Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com where I teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about odd time signatures, specifically 5-4 and 7-4, how to count them, how to feel them, how to play in them. These time signatures can be super tricky to count and play, but they're essential for a wide range of musical styles and more advanced uh, musical pieces and works and amazing improvisation practice uh, from jazz to prog rock to world music these are used in. So whether you are a beginner or an advanced player, understanding odd time signatures is a valuable skill that will take your playing to the next level. In this video, I'll be breaking down how to count and play in 5-4 and 7-4, and I'll be offering some tips and tricks for making these time signatures feel more natural, and they really can feel very natural. I'm going to show you exactly how that works. Grab your guitar and let's dive in. If you don't know what odd time signatures are, it's very simple. A time signature tells us simply how many beats there are in a measure of music. The most common time signature is 4-4, four, four, which means that there are four quarter notes and really just four beats that we're feeling in a measure. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That is 4-4 four, four time or also called common time. An odd time signature is simply any time signature or meter, it's also called, any time signature or meter that has an odd number of beats in a measure. Okay, and we're just thinking of the top number. So 4-4 four, four has four beats in a measure, has four quarter notes in a measure. So if we say 5-4, that's an odd time signature because the top number is odd. Or 5-8, odd time signature because the top number is odd. So we're talking about 5-4 and 7-4 or 5-8 and 7-8. doesn't really matter because you can change the tempo and they can feel the same. A measure containing five beats or a measure containing seven beats or nine beats or three beats, those are all odd time signatures or odd meters. Now, how people usually count 5-4 and 7-4 or feel them is really contrived. And we think of these uh, time signatures as sounding very awkward because people play them awkwardly, but they don't have to be played awkwardly. So we might count, and I'm going to do a lot of lead improvisation here as part of this because I think that's the best way to feel these. So people might count 5-4 and think, okay, it's a group of three and then two. So you go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. One, two, three, one, two. Notice how kind of contrived that sound. It could that could be a feel you want. That's fine, but one, two, da, 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 da. it's like we are really, really counting, making sure it feels like three and then two, because it's the only way for us to keep track of it. So similarly, if we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, is how someone might feel seven four. That's not wrong, and that definitely can be and is a good feel but it's not a good thing at all if we're doing that as a crutch if we have to do that to make sure that that's how we know that we're adding up to seven beats or five beats or whatever it is so that's why so often we think of these odd time signatures as clunky because we we can't feel them naturally and smoothly uh, in the way that I'm going to show you next. So here's the secret to counting and feeling 5-4 or 5-8 time signatures, and that's that we want to take this odd time signature and actually make it even. We want to make it symmetrical, and this is just the way we train ourselves to feel it, and then we can play any rhythms within it. So check this out. We got 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just playing within scales just to play, you know, 5 beats or 5 beats with the 8th note in there. How are we going to make it symmetrical? Well, we're going to divide it up into eighth notes. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if we play a chord down on beat one and two, one, two, and I'm keeping the eighth notes in there too, one, two, and then click twice, one, two, click, click, and now we go up, up, click, click. Now, we have five beats spaced out where the music is happening, happening symmetrically. So one, two, and, and. One, two, and, and. One, two, and, and. Okay, so that's one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and, five, and. Okay, so that's all five beats. But when I play it that way, one, two, and, and. Bum, 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 bum. I forgot. Bum, bum. Sounds pretty smooth, right? It doesn't sound like I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So to get used to this five, four feel, we want to play constant notes like that. One and two and three and four and five and one and two, and then play the down, down, up, up, down. 
down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. Just sounds like a groovy thing now, but that's in five, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's broken up perfectly evenly. Now we want to actually play constant notes and accent the ones that are helping us uh, create the symmetry. So we go. Check out if I do this uh, with like a D minor seven chord to an A seven chord, so you can really hear that like there's a measure of five four each, and the harmony changes. So down, down, up, up, down, down. So you can really hear the harmony change in, in a measure of 5-4, and I'm feeling it because of down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. Okay, so that's just to show you the harmony. Now, a really cool way to work on this is because it's a group of five, and the pentatonic scale is a group of five, check this out. You can use this pentatonic scale and go up an octave and back down, and notice how you're actually cycling back on yourself perfectly. Down, down, up, up. On, on, off, off, down, down, up, up, one, two, and, and. You can play the whole scale. Whereas if you do that in 4-4, four, four, you get off of, you know, the main beat. It doesn't loop back on itself so perfectly. But that is how we work on 5-4. You can play random notes, play scales, play chords, play whatever, and get that feel down. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. And that's going to help you get a sense of the 5-4 to the point where then you can play anything in 5-4 because you're internally feeling that. Uh, those accents within you and knowing where you are within that odd time signature. Playing and counting in 7-4 can be really tricky, just like 5-4, but we can make 7-4 symmetrical by playing the first three beats, one, two, three, and then three off beats in a row after two clicks. One, two, three, click, click, one, two, three, click, click. So now it is symmetrical once again. One, two, three, up, 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 down, 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 up, up, up. One, two, three, and, and, and. And that adds up to seven. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and one. Okay, so that's how it works. You get two groups of three evenly spaced apart within a time signature. So now we want to improvise with it. One, two, three, up, 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 down, 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 up, up, up. Do this first where you're clicking on the non-accents and then start playing whatever you want with the accents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Get to the point where you can improvise constant notes accenting those two groups of three in seven four. Doesn't sound weird, doesn't sound awkward, doesn't sound uneven. It sounds very even. We can't even tell it's 7 4, but it is, and that's the secret to this. If I do this over D minor 7 to A7 again, I'll do 7 4, one measure each, seven beats of D minor 7, seven beats of A7, improvising the notes. using just chord tones of those two chords so you can really hear the harmony changing in 7-4, and that's how I'm keeping track of it while playing constant eighth notes.
In 7-4, you can play a major scale with eighth notes accenting one, two, three, and then waiting to eighth notes and then accenting the three ands in a row, and you are outlining a major triad, and you are staying exactly with the root at the beginning of the measure each time. A little hard to explain, but of course there's seven notes in a major scale, so it lines up with itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, so if you can play two octaves of a major scale in 7-4, if we do that accenting thing, one, two, Playing in 7-4 with that even accent. One, two, three, and, 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 down, 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 up, 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 hey. bop, 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 Really, really cool way to practice this. I actually play a lot of scale exercises with that feel just so I am targeting the root. And in all of my scale lessons, I'll put a link to my scale series in the description. I talk about making sure we know where the root is, we're hearing the root, and we're feeling the root with a certain type of exercise. Well, this kind of does that for us, gets us back on the root every time, and we're playing in an odd time signature. If you need some scales to work on this with, I have an amazing free PDF that is a download of all the most important scale diagrams for the guitar written on the guitar for guitarists. Every scale that is important to know in five Five positions. It's called my Printable Parent Scales PDF. You can download that totally for free with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. That's how we unlock 5-4 and 7-4, and it is an amazing thing to practice. If you're into this kind of thing, if that's one of your goals, you probably are interested in kind of more modern, more advanced, more experimental, uh, more um, interesting music, stuff that isn't so kind of mainstream standard, uh, and or just wanting to get intellectual about your music and make sure we conquer these musicianship skills. Well, if you're into that, then you will love my video on quartal harmony. That is about chords that are built in stacks of fourths instead of stacks of thirds. It's a really cool video. Check that out. I'll put a link to it on the screen here right now if you're watching on YouTube, or you can go to it with a link in the description. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson is about how to devise the perfect practice routine, some amazing practice routine advice that will really help you make progress. Hope to see you in that video next week. Take care and happy practicing.